Hey, check it. Hey, check it. Put the place up. Good morning, peeps, and welcome back to the channel. So today, I thought I'd take it outdoors today, go for a little cheeky whack. Literally, the only things that you are gonna need for today's session is one band, probably some headphones, maybe a cheeky pair of shades, a little bottle of H2O. Now, I've been buying this stuff all the time. It's like a Lidl's own flavoured water. There's four calories in the whole litre. It's like the only way that I'm actually managing to get a decent amount of water in because I'm terrible at drinking water. So. If that's a problem for you, these are like 32p per bottle. I just stock up on about six of them each week and just take with them each workout. The other thing that you might want to get hold of if you're going to train at the park like I am today, is just a pair of gloves just to protect yourself with everything that's going on at the moment. Yeah, then apart from that, all you're going to need is a, bit of both, a little bit of motivation, a little bit of space to train. And even for this one, because it is a pull workout, a bit of back and buys. If you haven't got a pull-up bar or anything like that, don't worry, I've actually thrown in two alternatives to the pulling movements that you can do with just this band. You can get most of these bands, by the way, just on Amazon. So if you're stuck for anything, get a bowl. But yeah, today I would usually be going to the gym to train legs, which obviously isn't happening at the moment in the midst of COVID-19, everything being shut down. So I'm on my way to the park to do a little cheeky pull workout with just myself and some bands. I suppose in light of everything that's going on, like it's a glorious day. It's sunny. I'm out in the park. I'm able to train. Like, there's some things that you can put in perspective where life isn't too bad. And usually I'll be going to a dark gym today. Fucking hell's that, man. It's just... Oh, it's bad. Today I'm going outdoors, training in the park. Get a little bit of tan on, get a pump on, and get a little bit swole. So, let's get off to the workout. So as you can see, it was a lovely day in the park today, getting some vitamin D in. And I firstly wanted to start off with some pull-ups, everyone's favorite exercise, or one that we want to see progressing as much as we kind of started with one times 100 reps of this. Of course, I obviously broke it down into mini chunks and didn't just bang out 100 reps because that would be insane. With the pull-ups though, it's obviously going for an overhand grip and it is the king of bodyweight exercises. Hoping to be hitting the lats here more so than the biceps, which is why we go for a thumbs over and I've kept the width of the grip not too far apart, but not too close because I don't want to hit too much bicep. The rep range obviously is going to challenge me and force me to work until failure and you can use a timer on this if you wish to see how quickly you can get those 100 reps out. I was kind of breaking them down, starting with 20 reps, getting as many out as I can and then starting to move into 10 reps and moving all the way down to sometimes I was only getting like two or three reps when it was coming to the end of the set. With these, like for pull-ups, I mean I haven't been able to do too many back movements or pull-ups which has really challenged myself to so find these bars over in the park was great and um, these didn't fall in the park remits just so people are aware and the council were present there who said it was fine to use the bars as long as I was wearing gloves which obviously you can see I have with regards to push versus pull movements and how many pulls you can get I think it's important to make sure that you are hitting these pull movements and building strength on them because it is apparent that you can get a lot of push-ups done at home you can work on your pushing strength a lot more so we need to make sure we're getting that balance between the push and the pull movements and making sure that we have that um, equ equilibrium, is that the word I'm looking for? Um, or we have that equal balance between our push and pull movements so we're not too over dominant in either one. So what I'm also going to move into here, now I've just finished my pull-ups, is an alternative to the pull-up itself. So a lot of people won't have access to a bar at home and won't be able to go to parks depending on where you are. So what I've also included is an alternative exercise which is gonna be banded pull-downs. It's pretty much the same as doing a cave machine lap pull down. And again, we're gonna go for one times 100 reps here, but trying to bang out as many reps as possible because it's not as difficult as the pull up. So if you can, what I'm doing here is just switching either knee. One, not to get my knees too dirty. And two, I just find that I get a different balance depending on where my knees are and works slightly differently on either side of the lats. So again, just trying to get a full stretch, a full squeeze, squeeze and driving down with those elbows each and every time to get that stimulation through the lats. Now, our next exercise, this brings into that debate between pull-up versus chin-ups. I prefer to get both. Obviously, with the chin-ups, we're going for a supinated grip. We're going to get a lot more of the bicep 
activation here, which is why I wanted to hit this. And we're also hitting one time 50 reps just because my back was absolutely fried after thrashing out 100 reps on the pull-ups. There isn't necessarily one which is better than the other. It's just a case of what are you wanting to focus on more so for that particular workout. Now, as we are doing back and biceps here, I was just alternating between. So I did my pull-ups first, hitting more the lats and the back, and then I switched into doing the chin-ups because I wanted to smash in a little bit of biceps whilst we had the bar at use. Again, I'm trying to use a lot more the bicep here to get up and get that chin as close to the bar as possible. Again, on the last few reps, it became a little bit of a struggle, struggle as the biceps became absolutely fried. Again, I just want to throw in an alternative exercise here to the chin-ups because again, I'm aware that not everyone has access to a bar or a pull-up bar at home. So what we're gonna replicate is the previous movement, but we're doing an alternative banded supinated pull-down. So again, I've just switched the grip up. So whenever we're looking at uh, pronated and supinated, we're looking at the supinated movement here, which is just where if you held your hands out, it's like you're holding a ball of super, is how I remember it. So just doing the supinated pull-downs, again, going exactly the same. But doing a higher rep range here because the banded pull downs are a little bit easier than doing the chin ups themselves. So, we're going to try and thrash as many of these out as we can. Again, looking to get that full stretch at the top of the movement and full squeeze down all the way into the lats as close to the core as possible. I just like to, between each set of these, stretch the lats out a little bit, let the blood flow through the, through the lats and engage with a little bit of that vitamin D. Our next movement, we're going to go into, this is probably my favourite movement in regards to stimulating the lats and it is a straight arm pull down. So usually you probably see um, this done in the gym with a cable machine, so we're just going to imitate this movement using some bands and round a pull. The benefit with the banded version is that obviously as the tension increases through the bottom of the movement, we're going to get a little bit more uh, tension and it allows for extra range. You want to keep a slight bend in the elbows, keep them locked and take a stance like a gorilla, ass out, chest out, and get a full stretch and full squeeze as you pull into the, the pelvis or the pocket. Don't let the shoulders come too high up and turn it into a, a tricep push down. And with this one, you won't get too much of the bicep activation. Again, going for seconds on this one, not rip ranges, so we can hit failure a lot better. Whew. So we are about halfway through at the moment, plucking up the back. One thing that is really nice to see is the amount of people that are outside and exercise and stuff at the moment. I know there's a lot of other stuff going on with financial stuff, relationships, people being isolated, mental health, but like you just can't beat going out and doing something sometimes. I know we're only allowed that once per day. So that's why I'm trying to enjoy it today on, on the Saturday and chill a little bit. But with my training, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing at the moment is like I explained in the last YouTube video, which I'll leave in the comments is in the description, sorry. It's doing time under tension training. So not focusing so much on rep range is just trying to get volume in there because it's difficult when we've only got bands and stuff to really fatigue the muscle and force it to failure. So I find working the times like I'm pop up on the screen today and doing something a little bit different. It's just a good way to challenge yourself and a good way to change and get away from the standard because this is a time where we just got to adapt and get done what we can. But I'm enjoying it at the moment. I think if we keep changing it up, we change the environment, we change the stimulus, then you can still keep a pretty good rig on you. So just before we go into our next exercise, this is going to be one of the extras. I'm just getting a little flex on, taking a little bit of sun, letting the blood come back into the back and biceps, taking a quick breather. And um, I added this exercise in just because I wanted to hit some rear delts as well. It wasn't planned. So I'm going to do some face pulls here. So these, again, have a time rep to increase time of the tension to hit failure and fatigue the muscle group past the 10 to 12 rep range, which you're used to. One of the questions I had with this one is why am I bringing my hands so far back? So the reason why is because we want to make sure we get external rotation and pull into the face because it's a pull movement, it's a face pull, it's not a row. This is where people get it wrong and most use the elbows only to pull. We want extra rotation, open that chest up and get the rotator cuff involved to engage the rear delts even more so. Now we have finished off our back movements. We're gonna go into our bicep movements. The first one being just a normal bicep curl for four times 60 seconds again. The benefit of this movement is with bands, is we have this pivot point. So the more we pull into the strongest part of the movement, the more resistance we have through the bands and the more tension we can create at the peak 
part of the bicep curl. This also stops us from using too much of the body and swinging it about like you see a lot of people doing with crappy cheek curls in the gym. Again, I'm using the time under tension method here because with bands you could probably go way over 12 reps and not be anywhere near failure. For more on this, go back and watch my last YouTube video on progressive overload and building muscle from home. Now, what we're gonna do for our last exercise, again, using the band, you can do this from anywhere, we're gonna go into completing some banded hammer curls. So firstly, get the band in a comfortable position under your feet, and then what you'll see me do is just wrap it around the hands to get a tighter and firmer grip on. Just alternate that until you're comfortable with it. Again, doing four times 60 seconds of reps here. Our final exercise, the pull movement. Again, working on seconds, not reps. And here we're gonna be working the long head of the bicep and the brachial. Oh, Myron hard there, Ch checking out the, uh, the, the biceps, lol. You'll also get a little forearm pump here, which is great to finish off after you just blitzed through 150 pulls to kick off the workout and leave you walking home like Hellboy. So again, trying to work to fail as much as we can, keep the elbows tucked into the body, try and get that full squeeze and full stretch through the bicep for each and every rep and just enjoy the final few movements of the workout. And that is our session done for the day. Oh, I was filming all this on my iPhone because I wasn't actually going to film this session, but I thought might as well pop a little workout up, something that you can get done if you've only got bands at home. And the other thing I wanted to do was because at the moment, I think you see a lot on social media is in front of workouts of people curling tins of beans and shoulder pressing bottles of wine when realistically it's not doing anything but a bit of extra cardio. Like, would you, they weigh up one kilo. The big question is, would you go into the gym and lift those little tiny one kilo weights for a workout. No, you wouldn't. So if you haven't got any accessibility to weights and dumbbells or resistance stuff, just stick to doing your body weight workouts. Just like I've been saying, just increase the time under tension. Go for four times one minute instead of four times 12 reps. Um, or you wanna do circuit stuff and get a bit of cardio and do that. We don't need to feel like you have to lift tins of beans and wines to get a good workout. In. During that session, managed to burn 509 calories. Wasn't really about that, it was more resistance based, but I popped that up on screen. It took me about an hour to complete the session. Now, whilst I'm on my one times exercise day, gonna get a walk in. So we're gonna go and get LD. She's been finishing a CrossFit workout. So we'll see what she's up to now and then try and get some steps in. There she is. <laughs> Oh, the bear of bins. Yay. So we are just going to go for a little stroll now, get the steps up for the day. And then what are we making this evening? Curry. Singaporean curry. Unbelievable, like a fruity curry. Um, but that is going to be, I'm going to end the video here because we're going to go for a walk and go and grab some bits from Tesco for the curry. If you like this video and found it helpful, which I'm sure you did, please, what do people need to do? Get a big thumbs up. And whilst you are there. Subscribe. Exactly. And if you want to drop in the comments what you would like to see more of, more workouts, food, videos, or just me and Lucy pissing about, then please drop it in the comments. And I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Stay home, stay safe, stay positive.